So in this video, I'm going to talk primarily about buttons, but also about other features uh, that you might see in Tekinta and that you might want to use. I'll start with the other features. So let's make a window as per normal. So window equals TK. And I should probably also actually import TK. So from Tekinta, import everything. Let's just make sure that works. Excellent, we're all fine. So we make our little window. And then we add to our window a label, any label. So we're going to say label1 is equal to label. And we're going to attach it to window as per usual. We're going to say text is equal to some generic text, right? But there's a few more properties than just text and uh, window, right? We've actually got properties such as padding. Um, I'm not sure if they apply to labels, they might apply to buttons. You can also change the color and the font of text. So I can say, for example, uh, that the color, I can say that the background color or the foreground color of this label is going to be whatever color. So I'm going to say the foreground color is red. I think it's not capitalized. And I'm also going to say that it's pad X, which is how padded it is uh, in one way, is equal to 30, right? I also actually need to put this label uh, into the grid. So we're going to say label one dot grid. And we're going to say row is equal to zero column is equal to one up oh, zero. Sorry. And then we're going to run that. So we're going to say a window dot main loop. Let's see what happens here. Not entirely sure if my uh, oh yeah it absolutely did work so you can see we've got some generic text here and you can see that the text has obviously worked we've got some generic text as the text we the foreground color is red and the pad x is 30. padding is just essentially padding around the uh, label Let's, let's up the padding and see what happens when we open it. So we'll say the pad X is 100, right? We'll close this down. Might be better to use this on a button, to be honest, but let's just do it. Let's see what happens. So you can see now it's a lot wider. That's because it's got a lot more padding, naturally. Now, there's nothing really to distinguish it from, you know, say, another generic uh, label or the rest of the screen. So we're going to just copy and paste this and we're going to change the background color let's see if that does anything so just to recap we've got the text as per usual we've got the foreground color which is red and because the text is what's in the foreground it'll come out red and we've got a hundred uh, whatever we've got a hundred padding value we're going to put in that bg which is the background color is equal to blue and now we should see quite a contrast right just get rid of this and start this as our main loop. I'm not sure why that's invalid, it isn't. Ah, yes, it absolutely is. I've got that comma there. There we are. Now, you can see that the background color absolutely is blue. And you can see how the padding X has worked. So, essentially, what the padding X is, is it just pads. I.e. It adds like a little bit more outside of you know, the main square that would normally be generated and it extends to the left and to the right. So padding X extends that way. And if I put, if I copy that here and paste it, we can actually get pad Y, which will pad it out up and down. Anyways, you can also see that the background color has indeed changed to blue and that the foreground color is indeed red. It's a bit small, so it's probably hard for you guys to see on those small screens, but bear with me, that will soon change. So let's change here pad Y, and we're going to say pad Y is equal to 100. I know we're going over the lines a bit here, so just do that. Let's run that. And now 
you can see that all of this is padded. So we're at 100 uh, X padding, which is 100 width, and we're at 100 Y padding, which is the height of a length, whatever you want to call it. Now, if I expand this, you'll see all the area around it is all gray because it's not labeled or anything. It just, just is what it is, right? So yeah, you can see that you can change pattern settings, you can change, you know, the color of the text, the color of the uh, background that the text is laid onto in a label, all of that good stuff. So those are a few little useful uh, other attributes. There's one more attribute I want to display that might be useful for just changing your layout, you know, to be more aesthetically pleasing or less aesthetically pleasing, if you like. So I'll copy and paste this. And I'll add it to the already ridiculously large uh, sort of list of arguments there. It's not a list as in a uh, a list um, type. Right. Now then, we're actually going to put font is equal to... I mean, what font do I... I'm just going to say Arial Bold because I know that works. I could probably put Times New Roman, for example. But anyway, you can change the font of the text. Um, I'm not sure if it'll come up very different. You can actually change the size of the text as well. So when you change the font, the first argument is going to be the font style. And the second is going to be the value. I'm sure you could probably make italics and stuff like that. I don't know how to do that. I could probably find out, but I don't care enough to learn. Let's see what happens here. Now you can see that the text itself is absolutely huge right because we've changed the value of the text size itself and the padding's a little bit larger because the padding is around the text um, rather than around just the inside of this element so it's not around the middle of this and then it's padded out it's actually padded out from here i think i do believe let's have a look we'll actually we'll run this other one and we'll see we'll compare them side by side if it allows us to does it allow us to should do get rid of that there we are you can see it's much less padded even though it's got the same pattern amount so those are some just nice fun little features that you can play around with you've got your padding you've got your foreground colors your background colors and you know you can change the font and all that kind of good stuff so you can really mess around with uh, the layout and the aesthetics if you want to now onto something a bit more important a bit more fun shall we so forget all of this stuff up here i'm not interested anymore we're going to make window once again i'm going to say it's equal to tk and look i know i've got all the same variables over and over again but bear with me i'm just redefining the same new variables you wouldn't do this in a real program i'm just doing it because you know i want to just get this tutorial done fast so you can get understanding of how this works so we're going to put some text and we're going to say it's equal to text for our first label right that's it that's all i care about for the first label we're going to say label one dot grid not good good doesn't exist grid definitely does but good doesn't i'm going to say the row is equal to zero and column is also equal to zero just set a regular grid you know and we're going to get a button and we'll call it let's see button one very very imaginative and the declaration to make a button is very similar to a label you just use the keyword button and you use window once again or whatever you know whatever you've called your variable that holds the uh, tk function so we attach it to window and we're just going to say the text is equal to click me in capital letters right quite simple it's going to be a very, very simple uh, little screen. And here we are. So, what we got? We got that and we got text. But for some reason, we don't have the button. Oh, I know why we, we don't have the button. Sorry, I messed up there. I haven't attached the button to the, uh, to the window. So, I actually need to pack. The button onto into the window i could i could dot grid it actually i'm gonna dot grid it you know i'm actually gonna dot grid it so we're gonna say row equal to zero column equal 
to one. There. Plus. I'm going to dock with it. Let's have a look now. And you can see we've got our text. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, text. And click me. So, what should I do? Well, I should click. But the thing is, I'm here clicking, I'm here clicking, 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 and I'm not getting anything. Is this some kind of error? Is the server not running? No, it's just we haven't actually programmed it to do anything. See, a button is useless. The fact that it exists doesn't mean that it does anything. So you can make a button, but you actually have to attach some kind of function uh, to it in order for it to uh, actually ex actually do something useful, right? So I'll give you a couple of examples of what we can do. But first of all, we have to define uh, a function that we'll, that, we'll, that we'll use when we click, right? So I'm going to define a function called click. And I'm going to say that when we click that, I don't know, label one, we'll say global label one label one is equal label one sorry dot um what's it called dot configure and we're gonna say that it's text is equal to button has been clicked not sure if this is gonna work to be honest because I haven't used this in a while, really. But, yeah, we're going to try it. We're going to try it anyway. And what we're going to do is we're just going to copy and paste all of this nonsense once again. Not sure if I even needed it to be global, to be honest. But it doesn't really matter. And all we're going to change is within this button. We're just going to put another attribute. And we're just going to put an attribute called command. I'm going to say that command is equal to click. Now, we're making the command equal to this function, but notice that we don't actually have to use the parenthesis. We just use the function name. I know that goes against everything in Python, but hey-ho, sometimes life isn't the way you want it to be. Now, when I open this, put window.main, and when I click it, did you see that? It changed to say button has been clicked. So I'll run it again. And when I click this, this text will change because now I have added that function to it, right? So the clicking actually does something. It doesn't now because, uh, well, I mean, it actually is still configuring the label. So configuring will change the uh, label configuration. But because it's changing it to the same thing, you don't notice that the click's doing something. But it is actually activating the click command, right? So it's not like it's doing nothing, it just seems like it's doing nothing after you've clicked it the first time. But it's just to demonstrate that you can, you know, use these buttons and click them in that way. Right? So let's try and do, I don't know, a different click function. Right? We'll define a new click function. We'll call it, oops, we definitely don't want to do whatever I did there. We'll call it click2, right? And we're not going to bother with label1. Instead, what we're going to do is we're just going to make a new label. So we're going to say label E is equal to label. And we're just going to say window. And we're going to say text is equal to click makes new labels. I actually saw this on someone else's uh, tutorial. The rest is... Or me, but I really enjoyed this, what it did, and I want to pass it on. So we're going to say labely dot pack. So we're going to pack this label. What this is going to do is if we copy and paste this and we change the command to click to instead of click, what's going to happen is the actual button is going to produce a new label which will be packed into the uh, into our window, right? Click to is not defined. Now it is. Let's run that. Oops. Which one's the real one? That's the question. Right, let's run it again. There we are. 
what happens now? So we click and it should add a label, but it actually hasn't for whatever reason. So I don't know, maybe there's a problem with uh, cannot use geometry manager pack inside, which already has slaves managed by the grid. I'm not sure what happened there, but this click command should have actually allowed us to pack the new label, but it hasn't. So yeah, never mind. It just is what it is, I guess. But anyway, forget this click to forget that. It doesn't really matter. The point is, as long as you define uh, some kind of thing for the command to do, you can essentially just, you know, click and it will execute whatever you've defined. I actually want to check something now since I've got that error. I want to check if I can actually do this without a global variable. Just want to, I just want to know if I can do this without a global variable. I don't think I can, because that just doesn't really make any sense. Um, but it might be possible, so I'm going to try it. And then we'll end after that. So I'm just going to attempt this, because sometimes you've got to try things that you think won't work, just to see what happens. So let's see what happens. See, it has worked. It will allow me to do it without a global variable for some reason. Crazy stuff, that. But, you know, whatever, I'm happy with that. Anyways... I hope you enjoyed that. But anyways, just before I go, there's some things to take away. So, you've seen that we can add labels and we can add buttons, right? And there's also some other attributes we can add. So we can add a foreground to, we can actually add these foregrounds and the fonts and the backgrounds and the padding. We can add these two buttons as well as to labels. So it's not just labels that have all these attributes. You can add all these texts, the foreground, background, the padding attributes, the font attributes, all of this can actually be added to the buttons as well as the labels. And those, you can play around with those, you know, just to kind of try and make a more aesthetically pleasing UI. Um, the labels and the buttons and really anything you add to the window can be added to the grid using the row and the column values. And using these values, you can place them in different parts of the window. So. You know that you've been let, you've been taught and the other thing you can do is you can make these buttons but you have to be aware that just making these buttons doesn't give them any use you can, all, all, all that will happen is you make a, if you make a button without a command is you'll be able to click it infinitely but it will produce no results so in order to make buttons functional you need to define some kind of method that gives them function and then when you click the button that method will run okay that's pretty much everything uh thanks for watching hope you enjoyed and also before you go away i would like you to try to experiment a little bit with this package try and tell me why why this error happened if you can't find out why don't worry because i i don't know why i'm sure i'll figure it out soon but yeah just try and make your own um aesthetically pleasing windows just see what you can come up with anyway thanks for watching and hope you enjoy